Let's look at how we actually make the list. How do we order the list? Here's an example of some writing. This writing would be inside of your research paper, inside your thesis. And we can see that the sentence is, perception is key to consumer satisfaction. And here we have the inline citation, Smith on page 56. And the next sentence is, Jones 152 wrote. This is what Jones wrote, that's a quote. So that's from page 152. And the author of that research is named Jones. So how would we go ahead and put these into the reference list? Well, the reference list would look something like this example here. And that is Jones, comma, David, and Smith, comma, Alex. So Jones comes first, and Smith comes later, because J is before S. So even though inside the text, Smith may come first, we don't do that in the actual reference list. We do it by alphabetical order. So all of your reference list at the end would begin with A, and go all the way to Z. We're going to talk more about that momentarily. The good thing to remember is that nothing precedes something. That is to say, if you have an empty space, or if you have a, something that's zero or A, they come at the beginning. But empty comes before zero and before A. How is that possible? Well, it's possible if you have, for example, two authors with the same name, like Smith. So we could have Smith and Smith. Now, what if this author here is Smith Alex, but this author is just named Smith? Well, then this Smith comes first, and the Smith Alex comes second. Let me give you another case. What if we had this case of both people were named Smith Alex? Is that possible? Um, totally possible. Two people have the same name. It's rare, but it's possible. And then Smith Alex, the first one, he had a middle name, and his middle name is Fred. So there's a middle name. But the second Smith Alex has no middle name. Therefore, this is empty. So who would go first? The Smith Alex empty goes first because empty, empty is before something. Nothing precedes something. So this one would be first and this one would be second. An important fact to remember is when you're writing your dissertation, when you're writing your thesis, when you're writing your research paper, it's easy to think, you know, all of these details in this reference list, the list that goes at the end, that lists all of your sources, you know, I don't have to have it exactly right. I can have it about right. Uh, somebody else will take care of it. When I send it to the library, send my thesis or dissertation to the library, the library will fix it. When I send my research paper to the journal, they'll fix it. This is a very common misunderstanding. I see it happen all of the time. Now. The key point here is you want to be very careful to be as professional as possible, especially if you're trying to publish your paper, so you're sending it to a journal. Don't forget the reviewers are very aware of these rules, so the APA rules, the MLA rules, and if they see your references are a mess, they're not consistent, they have mistakes, sometimes it's this way, sometimes it's that way, that is a very clear signal that the quality is not good, this researcher is not careful. So how can we trust the research numbers they presented, the data that they presented? How do we know that that is correct? We don't. We're very suspicious. So it would hurt your chances to be accepted. It would help you get rejected, which is the last thing you want. So when we're talking about who's responsible, is it the editor that's responsible? No, it's not the editor. Is it the proofreader that's responsible? If you had someone proofread it for you? No. The proofreader is not responsible. Is it the printer that's responsible? They may help. They may check. They may double check before they, they actually print it. The editor may have some staff, although usually they don't because this is all done without any money exchanging hands. It's all free donated service. Who's responsible though in the end? The author. Even if the journal helps you at the end, it's still your responsibility. And the worst thing that can happen 
is that your paper gets published, it gets in, and there are really silly, stupid mistakes inside that reference list that everyone can see and now you can never ever change. So it's very important to realize you, the author, are responsible.